Hi there, in this video I'm going to talk about a really remarkable survivor, a living piece of Melbourne's history that continues to exist in the 21st century against all odds. This is the Eltham Trestle Bridge, the only remaining wooden bridge on the Victorian railway network. And it's not out of sight on some distant country branch line, but on a busy electrified Melbourne suburban line. In the early days of the state railway system, the Victorian railways built hundreds of timber trestle bridges to broadly similar designs. Many still exist in various states of abandonment or on rail trails, and several are still in use carrying trains on heritage railways, most notably the Victorian Goldfields Railway, and of course Puffing Billy. But the bridge at Altham is truly unique. It's located on the suburban Hurstbridge line and still sees very intensive use, carrying roughly 120 electric suburban trains every weekday and almost as many on weekends. If you want a very large but fairly meaningless number to think about, that's about 200,000 tonnes worth of train crossing over each week, not including passengers. In a second I'm going to talk about the unique set of circumstances that have allowed this bridge to survive into the modern world, and why it isn't going anywhere anytime soon. But first, let's take a bit of a look at the bridge itself. It's about 195 metres long and consists of 38 spans. It's mostly straight with a slight curve at the down end. The railway here opened in 1902, so at the time of writing I could say the bridge is 120 years old. However, it's a bit more complicated than that. Obviously, timber doesn't last forever when it's out in the elements and holding up trains every day, so individual bits of wood are replaced as necessary on a regular basis. The good news is that most of these bits of wood are date stamped, so it's quite easy to work out the age of individual elements. While the bridge has never been fully replaced in one go, I am quite confident in saying there are no original timber pieces left, so it's not quite right to describe it as 120 years old. So then, given the presence of the date stamps, how old is the oldest bit? Well, back in 2011 I had a pretty thorough look and was able to find one piece from August 1915, and quite a few from the early 1940s. In the decades since then, maintenance has become much more regular, and today the oldest visible piece I can find is from 1941. It's also possible to see when major renewal work took place, when a certain date is especially widespread. There are quite a lot of bits dated from 1941, all cross pieces under the deck, I'm not sure what the technical term for those is. I also noticed quite a lot of pilings towards the up end of the bridge are from 1968 and 69. And of course the dates continue right up to the most recent 2020s replacements. One thing I noticed just recently is that they've started renewing some of the older date stamps to make them easier to read, and this should be very helpful in years to come. It's important to note that the bridge isn't entirely wooden. There are four slightly longer spans in the middle, including the span over the Diamond Creek, which are steel girders, though still with a wooden deck. There are also a handful of places where timber parts were awkwardly replaced with steel parts. I assume this happened back before the bridge was heritage listed. One of the main steel girders has this faint lettering on it which says something St Kilda 1242. Presumably that's the date these girders replaced the original timber ones. A natural characteristic of wooden bridges is that they are quite flexible, and you can actually see the spans bending under the weight of trains quite easily with the naked eye. This may look a bit alarming, but is of course perfectly safe. Trains have been doing this for 120 years after all. Partly due to this flexibility, the bridge has a very distinctive ride quality, and trains, especially extrapolis trains, wobble quite significantly on the curved section. The track on the bridge is also a rare remnant section of jointed rail, which contributes to its distinctive soundscape, namely what is known in technical terms as the clickety-clack, something which has disappeared from just about everywhere else in the state. I'm not sure if there's a specific reason welded rail hasn't been installed here, but it's probably not a coincidence that it's the bit over this bridge which hasn't been upgraded. Many Eltham people will tell you they never have trouble waking up from a nap before their station, because the sound and feeling of crossing the bridge are unmistakable even with your eyes closed. There is a 40k speed limit over the bridge, although given its position between two curves which also have 40k limits, it isn't really possible to go any faster anyway. 
While the Diamond Creek normally runs through a channel passing through just a single span, and can easily be jumped over in summer, during occasional floods it can get much higher, and in extremely rare occasions, the entire length of the bridge can be in water. This photo was taken in March 2010, just as a flood was receding. So the burning question is, why on earth has the bridge survived into the modern era, and why are there no plans to replace it? Well, in the 1980s, the Victorian Railways did want to replace the bridge, and planned to fill most of it to form an embankment, which was standard practice at the time and under countless other bridges. However, the Eltham locals of the day understood the bridge was historic, and organised a protest to let the VR know how they felt. Now, it might be easy to view this as a regular old case of nimbyism, but the reality is that the Trestle Bridge is a prominent local landmark, and people like it. That sentiment has continued to this day, and the bridge was heritage listed in 1998. The bridge is nestled in between Alistair Knox Park and the Eltham Footy Oval, and is also very close to the Eltham Library. Its unobtrusive design makes it fit into this landscape really well, and it's undeniably an iconic part of the local scene. Eltham is home to a lot of artists, and a lot of people who care about local history, so it's not surprising that of all places, this happened here. Politicians are well aware of the sentiment surrounding the bridge, and know it would be political suicide to plan a replacement today. In fact, when the recent partial duplication of the line from Greensboro was announced, the press release was very quick to assure the public that the bridge wouldn't be touched. Given the bridge has been retained essentially for aesthetic reasons, it's always slightly annoyed me that very little care is taken with the appearance of the surrounding area. The railways often dump stuff around and underneath it, and these two very ugly maintenance depots were built right next to it. The bridge also received these steel handrails in the late 90s, which, safety issues aside, didn't do much for the bridge's appearance. But overall, it's still an attractive area. So having this bridge still carrying commuter trains in the modern world is pretty amazing, and that isn't going to change anytime soon, at least not in the foreseeable future. It's a great example of something that's technically completely impractical, surviving just because it contributes to a nice public space, and I think that's a good thing. It's inevitable that further duplication will threaten it one day, but in my personal opinion, leaving a short single track section here of just a few hundred metres would be a perfectly acceptable outcome, unless we get to the point where Eltham needs a two or three minute frequency, an extremely unlikely situation at this stage. I've personally spent a lot of time around this bridge, passing both over and under it many hundreds of times, and probably will do so hundreds of times more. Thanks for watching.